So in January, I'm going to work for uh, Microsoft Research in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And the cool thing about the new lab is that it's a bunch of folks who are sort of theoretically minded, mathematicians, physicists, all interested in the notions of networks, right? And so we're all coming together and saying, how do we think about networks? And thinking about it from such different ways, and it's not to say that you converge all of those ideas, but a lot of new innovation comes when you're all surrounded by people who think totally different than you. And you know, so I can sit there and have this conversation with an economist about their understanding of networks, and suddenly start to look at what I'm seeing as network data, and be, you know, even though I have no interest in modeling my network data, understand the complexities of it. Um, the nice thing about the Microsoft Research Lab is that they're one of the old industrial research labs, which means that I will be publishing, I will be engaging with all sorts of public you know, environments, I will be speaking, I will be doing all of the things that you can imagine an academic to do um, without having to beg for money. <laughs> My first sets of research projects are, are probably going to be around notions of public and private and how those concepts are constructed um, within the confines of how do we think about social media, uh, mobile phones affecting our daily lives. How do we think about space and place, and how 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 do young people really grok that? Um, there's another sort of strand which I want to look at, um, which is sort of how this stuff plays out outside of the U.S. And then there's another strand where I'm sitting and waiting and watching with the mobile um, space until we get true social media, uh, because right now we don't have social media because we're lacking cluster effects, which means that. You know, if you're on Verizon and you're on Singular and you know you over there on Sprint and you're using three different kinds of phones, you can't do anything together. And so you need to have everybody being able to participate in a similar dynamic to actually get cluster effects, right? So if you have three people who all have an iPhone, you can have an entirely different kind of media experience. I suspect we're going to see breaks in the cluster effects within the next year or two. The iPhone, like with the G1, maybe. You know, honestly, I don't think so. I think it's going to be the iPhone. Okay. Um, you know, having played with both of them, I think it's going to be the iPhone in the U.S. Um, elsewhere, it's going to be different. I actually think the G1 is going to be more applicable. Um, actually, I think China and, and places like that, where you're going to see that kind of uptake. Um, so I think each of these places it'll take out differently. You know, it's going to depend on the carriers and dealing with the dynamics there, on the possibilities of municipal wireless, um, on finally creating standards in the mobile industry, which would be a bloody miracle, um, and dealing with all of these different dynamics so you can see cluster effects going. We only have seen cluster effects um, around the same technology uh, once or twice actually meaningfully in the US. The first was um, older populations in the Blackberry. The problem is, is that these are probably, this is the most antisocial crowd that you can possibly get on one technology. So great, they e you know email back to the office. That's just brilliant. The only other population that was really, really interesting was um, uh, deaf users all um, worked around the sidekick. Um, so the entire deaf community got on the sidekick. Unbelievable IM records, unbelievable engagement across all sorts of different dynamics, desperately trying out apps, desperately trying out things. T-Mobile constrained the things that you could do on the damn thing, but you could see the pressure and what happened once you got cluster effects going. So that's why I look at something like the iPhone, and for me, the target population that you really care about are the you know sort of under 25s. It's most likely going to break within the, the college age first, but it may actually, depending on how the Christmas market goes, it may actually break with the high school kids. And what that means is that if you've got all of them suddenly using social apps, you know, all of a sudden we can talk about location. You know, we can actually talk about you know social network sites. You know, within the notion of place, all of that becomes really critical. That's what I want to see, and I'm just sort of hedging my bets as to where it goes. But the moment that, I mean, I like watching things that break. You know, if you look at a lot of my previous research, I just sat there waiting and watching for something that was sort of like, ah, and then I go with it. So I'm watching the mobile space, but I have no interest in like studying it as mobile. I want to see practice. Um, and this is generally my issue, right? I don't care about technology. I right. care about practice. And um, it's one of the reasons that people are always asking me, why are you not doing more with virtual worlds? I'm like, when they become mainstream, I'm happy to. Until they do, I'm not particularly interested in doing so. Mm. And it's not to say that there's not interesting stuff happening there, but I love watching what happens when you start to see that sort of consolidation and that enthusiasm when something goes mainstream. Which media compelled you when you were growing up? Well, the internet. Um, I mean, the thing is, is that, you know, I was a geeky kid living in rural Pennsylvania who didn't we're, we're in Pennsylvania. belong. Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And my brother got um, a computer when I was in um, middle school, and I thought it was the dumbest 
thing on the entire planet. And I couldn't believe he was spending hours sitting on there writing these letters and numbers, aka code, and I wanted nothing to do with it. And then being, you know, the classic middle school kid, um, I was pissed off that he was using up this landline of mine and I couldn't actually call anybody. And, you know, at one point I sort of stomped into his room and I was like, what are you doing? And he's like, I'm talking. And I'm like, you're not talking, you're using your computer. And so he sat there and he showed me, you know, Gopher and Usenet, and you know, this is sort of, this is pre-mosaic. And, you know, all of a sudden he's like, hey, just try it, you'll find things. And I'm, you know, sitting there wandering around Usenet going, ooh, there are people in there. Right, and it was like a soiling green moment, right, where you're just like, mm, it's made of people, I like it. <laughs> and, you know, I got online as a teenager and it was just like, finally, people that are just not like, what it's like to deal with Pennsylvania folk. Um, and I was just like, there are people that think. <laughs> there are people that can teach me things. Um, and so I ended up spending, you know, my nights up, like, you know, my brother and I used to do this game where we'd sit and wait until we could hear mom snoring. And then it was like, online, right? Until the $700 phone bill came. <laughs> and that was the end of that. And then of course, you know, my friends who figured out how to do freaking, and we had a whole sort of, you know, total hacker culture that sort of burgeoned because all we wanted to do was get the hell out of Pennsylvania. Um, and, you know, I still think of the internet as having, you know, been the saving grace. I meant, and this was at a time when it, we didn't have all this stranger danger crap. So I spent all my nights talking to people. You know, it was the first, it was the first Iraq war, and I talked to all these soldiers who told me about, like, what it meant to be in the military, which was really particularly interesting to me at the time because I was uh, interested in going to the Naval Academy. And, you know, then I got to talk to all, you know, these adults who sort of helped me understand gender theory, and I had these crazy conversations about college, like, I'd never heard of Brown University, not where I was growing up, and, you know, people would listen to me talk about what I wanted to school, and they were like, you belong at Brown. And, you know, I, I remember this, you know, this one person late at night just basically being like, look, all you need to do is just get straight A's, don't piss anybody off, and then you'll leave. And so it became this game, right? It was just like, I would do exactly what it took to get 89.5s, which would flip over to A's, and then refuse to do any more work for the semester. You know, and it was this constant game of mine of like, I will prove that I can work in this system, and yet constantly resist it. Um, and that was my high school experience, but the, I go home and I spent all night online and it was much more my type of people, much more my type of environment. I learned far more there than I did in my questionable level of schooling, um, and I loved it. Um, so I went to school to study computer science, right? And then I realized I didn't like coding, so I started actually studying <laughs> what it was that people were doing with technology. Thank you so much. Thank you.